It is the second oldest rivalry in Vermont high school football. 110 times the Terriers and Cosmos have met on the gridiron, but who would take home the win in the 111th edition? We'll show you in just a bit, but first, welcome into week seven of the Friday football frenzy. We are just two weeks away from the start of the postseason, and aside from CBU and D1, we've got some serious races shaping up for top seeding in the upcoming playoffs. Five games on the slate tonight, all of them cross-divisional matchups with serious playoff implications. So let's dive right on in. The most intriguing game of the night coming in at least was a D2, D3 showdown in Woodstock. The unbeaten Wasps trying to pass Fairfax for the top seed in D3. 5-1 and one Linden angling for a home game or two in D2. Wasps all over the Vikings in the third. 20-7 here. Caden Perot breaking one straightaway speed. He gets in there to make it 27-7 in favor of Woodstock. Linden would respond in the fourth. Ethan Lussier tucking, keeping it for himself. A red zone scamper here. They would get the two-point conversion as well to make it 27-15. Onside kick would fail, and on the ensuing play, Vincent Patron says bye-bye. Strong run. Couple missed tackles. He takes it to the house. That would seemingly put this game away, but again, not so fast, says Linden. Vikings not going down without a fight. Lussier over the middle to Logan Wheeler. Taps the circle button after making the catch. Smooth spin move. He's gone. Vikings cut it back to two possessions. Woodstock, though, they were able to drain the clock, and they would plunge in one final touchdown to put this thing out of reach. Woodstock with the huge 41-23 win. Big rivalry games on tap for both teams next week. Linden hosts St. Jay in the game. Woodstock, meanwhile, will make the trip to Windsor. Down in Bennington, Mount Anthony hoping to move up a bit in the D1 standings. Fairhaven hoping to stay in the hunt for the top seed in Division II. First quarter, no score. Slater's with the ball after recovering a fumble. Cody Adams finding Sam Kyhill. He slithers out of a tackle, jukes out a Patriot. He sprints for the pylon. He would get in there for the score. Fairhaven up 7-0 in a hurry. Patriots, though, would respond at the end of the quarter. Jonathan Crossman evading some pressure. He finds Colin Brady, makes a quick cut. He's taken down inside the red zone. That would set up a game tying score. We go start of the second now. The Patriots, they're going to force a turnover. Adams' route, well, it's going to get jumped here by Asa Reese. Reese pretty much immediately taken down, but on the very next play from scrimmage on the other side of the ball, Reese taking the handoff, bounces off a few Slaters. He would power his way all the way down to the one yard line. The Patriots would punch it in to take the lead on the next play. They'd go up 14 7, and they never let go of that lead. Close throughout, but the Patriots win at 23 21. Slaters will wrap the regular season against Pulteney next week, while Mount Anthony heads to Brad for a Thursday night showdown. The 111th meeting between Bellows Falls and Springfield from Riverside. Cosmo seeking their first win in the series in 15 years. Opening drive, though, BF getting on the board first. Carson Clark getting to the outside, 21 yards on the score. The Terriers in front, 7-0. So we'll go second quarter now. Bellows Falls up 14-0, and they would add to it. Eli Albee dropping into the hands. Dime here to Will Halleck. 26 yards on that touchdown connection. The Purple Gang up three TDs. Then after forcing another turnover, BFA cashing in on the short field. Clark to the outside again. This time 17 yards to Pater to make it 28 zip. Late in the half, Bells Falls go into the air one more time. All be to Clark. Sheds two tacklers, stays on his feet. He's going to get in there from 53 yards out. The Purple Gang rolling. 41 to nothing to maintain their dominance in this series. Terriers wrap the regular season against Sanborn, New Hampshire next week. While Springfield has a bye, and they will wait for their D3 playoff draw. Up to Hartford we go. The Hurricanes still in the hunt for a home game in Division I. North Country, they're just clinging to one of those last few spots in D2. The Hurricanes making noise right out of the gates in this one, forcing a three and out then. About Graham Thompson flying in, blocking the punt. Hartford takes over on the doorstep. Knock, knock. Who's there? Well, it's Nick Daniels. Smooth run up the gut. That would make it 7-0 in favor of the home team. After an interception by Austin St. Peter, Daniels would get another chance to put some numbers up on the scoreboard. Just keeping his balance over the goal line. He'll score six more. The Canes coasting in this one. 49-12 is your final. Hartford, Hartford will resume their Route 4 rivalry with Rutland next week. Falcons will wrap the regular season against Mount Abe for Gents. And up to the kingdom for one final game on the night. Both St. Jay and Colchester with some serious work to do. If they want to be at home in the upcoming quarterfinals. Wouldn't take long for the toppers to jump in front in this one. Four minutes in, Carter Bunnell on the keeper. He goes up the gut, sprints past one defender, shakes another. Goes 52 yards to the house. St. Jay up 7-0 in a hurry. Four minutes later. 
Toppers on the move again. Bunnell faking the handoff to Justin Lewis. He releases on the screen, and absolutely nobody was anywhere close to him. He's going to go 45 yards untouched to pay dirt. St. Jay doubles their lead. It's 14-0. Lakers wouldn't go away too easily. Mason Shelter from a few yards out before the break, getting his team within 12. But St. Jay, they are not about to just kneel out the clock here. They go 60 yards in less than 40 seconds. Owen Marcotte for the score here. St. Jay dominant, 54-14. Colchester will host MMU next Friday while well, the game looms for St. J next Saturday. All right, we got six games on the Saturday slate tomorrow. A couple of them pretty huge, but hard to top a week seven battle of unbeaten 6 0 Fairfax Lamoille. Making the short trip down to South Burlington, they will face 6 0 Rice in a cross division showdown for both teams. Now, both teams entered this week sitting in the top spot in their respective divisions Rice in D2, Fairfax Lamoille in D3, but Bells Falls and Woodstock, among others, nipping at their heels. So, needless to say, be a huge win for whoever can get this one tomorrow. Kickoff between the Bullets and Green Knights set for one o'clock on that brand new turf. That Rice Fairfax game, one of four 1 p.m. kickoffs on Saturday. Milton and Mount Virgin set to meet in Bristol. A Rutland County rivalry is Pulton. Pulteney welcomes in Mill River. And Spalding and Missisquoi will meet in Swanton, both those teams seeking their first win on the year. Two night games as well tomorrow. BFA welcoming in a Rutland team still angling for a top two seed in Division One in Essex. Well, they entered the week in that number two spot in D1. The Hornets facing a hungry Middlebury Tiger team that likely needs to win this game if they want a home quarterfinal. We'll have highlights from that one for you tomorrow night.